Hi everyone, uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, our work where we construct new non-interactive zero knowledge uh, for NP based on trapdoor hash and the LPN assumption. Maybe the bottom line uh, consequence of such a result is the first NISIC for NP from LPN and EDH, which are both standard assumptions that were not known to imply NISICs before. Uh, this is a joint work with Svika and Venkata, and let's begin. So I'm going to start with uh, defining uh, NISICs. So an non-interactive zero knowledge uh, for, a for an NP language L is simply a proof system. Uh, where both the prover and the verifier have an access to an honestly generated CRS. And the protocol is non interactive, so it consists of uh, a single uh, message that the prover sends to the verifier. And we ask that the verifier is uh, efficient, of course, but we also want that the prover is efficient given an NP witness W for the statement. Um, and we consider the standard uh, completeness, soundness, and zero knowledge properties. So, uh, NISICs are interesting by themselves, but they also have lots of nice applications in crypto, including uh, CCA security, uh, signatures, and uh, new applications in the regime of cryptocurrencies. So, since the ultimate goal is constructing uh, NISICs from standard assumptions, let's quickly go through the known approaches uh, from the literature uh, that do that. So, uh, the textbook approach is called the hidden bits model, and uh, it can be instantiated uh, using either chapter permutations uh, or VRFs or VPRGs. Uh, but this approach is a bit limited uh, since the uh, only known constructions of such building blocks uh, are either based on factoring related assumptions or assumptions over bilinear groups. Um, another way to get NISX was discovered by Gross, Ostrowski, and Sahai, and it works in the setting where we have a, a bilinear group uh, and we assume some diff Hellman style assumptions over it. Um, but this approach is very non generic. Uh, it uses uh, uh, properties of uh, such groups, so it doesn't seem that um, um, NISICs from new standard assumptions will come from this uh, direction. The last approach I'm going to discuss is an approach where we start with uh, an interactive uh, zero knowledge protocol and we use the Fiat HME transform to turn it into a non interactive protocol. And in order to uh, instantiate the Fiat HME transform in a provably sound manner, we use a primitive or correlation interactable hash. And a long and nice line of work has eventually led to a construction of correlation tractable hash under the LWE assumption. To, so to summarize uh, things up, uh, we have NISX under uh, factoring related assumptions or uh, assumptions over bilinear groups or LWE. Um, in our paper, uh, we extend the set of standard assumptions uh, from which we uh, have NISX and we follow up on this last approach uh, and instantiated uh, assuming a tabular hash, which in particular can be constructed from DDH and jointly assuming uh, the LPN assumption. So how do we really get NISX uh, from Fiat Shamir? So we start with the base protocol, which consists of three messages, and uh, we assume it's a public point protocol. So in the beginning, the prover sends his first message A, and then the verifier replies by a random challenge E, and then the prover sends his third message, and the verifier either accepts or rejects. So the Fiat Shamir transform using a hash function H uh, looks as follows. So um, we add the hash, a randomly sampled hash key to the CRS, and now the prover computes his first message A as before, but in order to uh, simulate the verifier's challenge, he uses the hash function. So now the verifier's challenge is computed as the hash of A under the key which is found in the CRS. And once uh, he computed the uh, first message A and the challenge E, he can uh, continue and compute the third message Z, and then he sends the entire transcript to the verifier uh, at once. So it's easy to see that this protocol is non-interactive, -inter and also that if we start with a public coin protocol, then the non-interactive protocol is also complete. We also know that if the base protocol is honest verifier zero knowledge, uh, then the Fiat Jamir transform preserves zero knowledge. Uh, so uh, the only missing piece in the puzzle here is soundness. So it's not clear that even if the uh, base protocol is sound, that the non-interactive protocol is also sound. And the reason is that the prover has some control over uh, the choice of the verifier's challenge. Um, and uh, in particular, he can uh, choose uh, a first message A such that the verifier's challenge H of A falls inside the soundness error of the protocol. Uh, so this leads us to uh, consider a specific kind of uh, uh, base protocols, which we call sigma protocols. So sigma protocols are three message public coin honest, verif honest verifier zero knowledge uh, protocols, which also enjoy uh, this unique batch challenge property. Uh, and this property basically says that for any uh, first message uh, A, there exists at most one value of a, a E that may possibly allow a, a cheating prover to cheat. And we call such a value of E the bad challenge uh, E. So uh, more formally, uh, fixing a CRS, an X which is not in the language, and the first message A, there exists at most one bad challenge E for which uh, there exists a transcript A, E, Z uh, uh, that the verifier accepts. 
So uh, this property allows us to define the batch challenge function, which is defined using a CRS and X, and gets as an input a first message A, and outputs uh, the corresponding batch challenge E. Uh, and now we can claim soundness of the non-interactive protocol as follows. So if we uh, can say that it's hard for the cheating prover to find a first message A such that H of A is the bad challenge, then it's computationally hard for a prover to cheat uh, because the only way he can cheat is by choosing a first message such that H of A is that bad challenge corresponding to A. And a hash function that satisfies uh, this hardness requirement is called a correlation interactable hash for the bad challenge function F. Okay, so now we know how to construct the NISX uh, using Fiat Shamir, and all we need is uh, two ingredients. So first of all, we need a sigma protocol to start with, and then we need a, a hash function that is correlation interactable for the a class of batch challenge functions corresponding to uh, the sigma protocol. So now we try to instantiate this recipe, and the guiding rule uh, that we should keep in mind is the following. The simpler the batch challenge function uh, is, then uh, the easier is the task of constructing correlation interactability for uh, such a class of functions. So our goal is kind of dual here. So first of all, we need uh, to describe the uh, batch challenge function for some sigma protocol as simple as possible. And on the other hand, we need to construct correlation tractability uh, for, uh, from standard assumptions. So now we can start asking questions. For example, it's not clear how simple can the batch challenge function be, uh, and it's not even clear whether it's efficiently computable. Uh, and on the other hand, we can uh, uh, ask about constructions for correlation tractability under standard assumptions. So uh, the, for, the first work that tries to uh, uh, prove the soundness of Fiat Shamir under cryptographic assumptions is this work by Kanet et al, where they observe that the batch challenge function for a sigma protocol uh, for NP is efficiently recognizable. So if I give you a batch challenge, you can efficiently say that this is a batch challenge. And consequently, the recognition tractability task becomes to construct CI for all efficiently recognizable functions. And they are able to do that under uh, uh, sub-exponential I.O. and some other strong notion of uh, obfuscation, and these assumptions are uh, clearly uh, uh, not standard. Uh, there have been many follow-up works, um, each trying to construct correlation tractability for um, a, a different uh, class of functions that is sufficient for NISX, but again, they, are, they all do that under uh, exotic assumptions. So, um, uh, for example, uh, some uh, assume sub-exponential I.O. or uh, fully exponential AKDM security, uh, but very recently, um, last crypto, um, or even a bit before, uh, uh, this line of work led to constructions uh, uh, under standard assumptions. Uh, and in particular, this last work by Pikert and Shihan, uh, they used the observation that the batch challenge function is efficiently computable for some sigma protocol. And uh, therefore, uh, all they need now is correlation interactability for all efficiently computable functions, and they can get that under LWD. Uh, so let's uh, recall our goal. Our goal is to uh, extend this uh, paradigm uh, uh, and base it on other standard assumptions. And there seems to be a barrier here. So uh, notice that uh, these last two works, uh, they consider the complexity of computing the batch challenge function, and they say that the batch challenge function is an arbitrary polynomial time computation. And therefore, we need correlation tractability for any polynomial time computation, and it seems that uh, we need a, a homomorphism for any polynomial time computation uh, in order to do that. Or in, in other words, we need full homomorphism, and we uh, know that we can get that only under LWE, um, as far as we know, of course. What we do differently is we consider the complexity of approximating the bad challenge. And uh, using such an approach, uh, we can show that it, uh, it is sufficient that we use uh, partial homomorphism. And in particular, we can use homomorphism that we can get from other standard assumptions, such as DDH or uh, QR. Um, so more specifically, uh, we observe that the batch challenge for some sigma protocol for an NP, uh, a complete language can be approximated by constant degree polynomials. Uh, and therefore, uh, it's sufficient now to get correlation tractability for all functions that can be approximated by constant degree polynomials. And this is exactly what we do. Uh, and we use uh, uh, trapdoor hash and uh, the LPN assumption. Good. So uh, let's uh, draw a more uh, elaborate comparison between uh, period work and our work. So again, like I said, uh, period work uses the fact that uh, there exists a sigma protocol for an NP link, a complete language where the batch challenge is efficiently computable, and therefore a correlation tractability for all comp efficiently computable function suffices for NISIC. Uh, and they can uh, get such correlation tractability using homomorphism for all efficient functions, uh, or full homomorphism in other words, uh, under LWE. 
so homomorphism is a very vague notion, but you can think about FHE in such a case or polyhomomorphic commitments. Uh, so at a high level, what they do is they use homomorphism for a function class F, which is in this case any polynomial time computation, to get correlation compatibility for F, for any polynomial time computation. Um, so again, our goal is to start with other standard assumptions, in particular assumptions that do not uh, give us full homomorphism. So our starting point is um, a work also from Last Crypto by uh, Lofting et al, where they show how using uh, many standard assumptions, in particular a DDH, we can get uh, some form of well-structured homomorphism. Um, again, this is very vague, but the uh, formal abstraction for that uh, was called trapdoor hash. So we get uh, some sort of well-structured homomorphism for all constant degree functions. Um, and uh, we show that um, using well-structured homomorphism for such a weak class of functions, we can get a compatibility for a much stronger class of functions. So rather than starting with homomorphism for F, we start with homomorphism for a much uh, a weaker class C. Uh, but uh, using some structure of uh, 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 the underlying homomorphic primitives, we get correlation compatibility for uh, the strong class F. And more specifically, we get correlation tractability for all relations that can be approximable by constant degree polynomials. And if we want to compare uh, this notion to the uh, usual correlation tractability notion, then uh, in, in the standard correlation tractability, we ask that it's hard to find an x such that h of x is equal to the band challenge of f of x. But what we want now is a hash function such that it's hard to find an x for which h and x and f of x are even close to each other in some metric. Okay? So this is a stronger notion, but we're considering a much weaker class of functions, in particular uh, constant degree uh, polynomials. Uh, and then we show that using uh, uh, CI for approximate relations, we can uh, uh, get correlation tractability for all functions that can be approximately computed by constant degree polynomials. And then we show that under LPM, uh, this is sufficient in uh, for NISX. Uh, and more specifically, we show a sigma protocol for an NP language. Uh, in which the batch challenge function can be approximated using, using constant degree polynomials, under the LPN assumption, of course. Um, and this is how we get our result. Good. So uh, following this outline, we can uh, divide our results to three parts, and I'm going to go through uh, one after the other. Okay, so let's first define uh, what correlation tractability is. So we say that the hash function H is correlation intractable for a function F, if for any polynomial time adversary, it's hard to win the following game, which we call the correlation tractability game. So the game goes as, as follows. The challenger first samples a random hash key, k, and then he gives k to the adversary, and the adversary's goal now is to find a correlation with respect to k. Uh, namely, his goal is to find an x such that h of x is equal to f of x. So uh, h is correlation tractable for f if no PPT adversary can win this game. And we say that uh, H is a correlation tractable for a function class F if it is correlation tractable for every function in the class. It will be useful at this point to talk about a technique uh, that was used in prior work uh, to get CI and is called summer statistical correlation tractability. So we say the following. Assume that uh, for every uh, function F, uh, so given F, we can sample a fake hash key K sub F which is indistinguishable from the uh, real hash key. And further, that uh, the CI game, when we sample a fake hash key rather than a real hash key, is statistically hard to win. So again, we consider uh, the game, which is identical to the uh, game we, we've seen before, but now rather, rather than sampling a, a real hash key, we sample a fake hash key using the a fake generation algorithm. And uh, what does it mean for the game to be statistically hard to win? It basically means that uh, the probability that there exists a correlation between H under the fake hash key and F is negligible. So assuming we have these uh, two uh, properties, then using a standard indistinguishability argument, we can claim that H is actually correlation tractability for the entire function class uh, calligraphic F. Good. Um, so let's start. Uh, uh, with a very trivial uh, case uh, towards our uh, final construction. So we consider the case where our function class uh, f contains only length-expanding functions. Uh, more specifically, every function in the class takes a small domain and expands it to a, a large range. And notice that in particular, in such a case, um, the image of any function f is some small subset uh, of the range. So our candidate for correlation tractability in such a case is a hash function that simply, simply samples a random vector r 
uh, in the hash key and uh, outputs it uh, regardless of the value of x. So notice that once we fix a hash key, then our hash function is constant. So what happens now? Uh, for every function in the class, the probability that there exists a correlation is equal to the probability that r is even in the image uh, of f. Um, and if the image of f is sufficiently small, or more precisely, if it's exponentially sparse in the range, then the probability that r is in the image, or uh, equivalently, that there exists a correlation, is negligible. Good. So this simple construction is actually correlation interactable for expanding functions. And our idea is to impose the same uh, image uh, in the general case, even when our class contains shrinking functions. So when our class contains uh, shrinking functions, we cannot simply sample a random R and, uh, uh, and assume it's going to be outside of the image, because the image of the function can be the entire range. So what we do instead, we define our hash function H using some other hash function we call H prime. So our hash construction will uh, look as follows. Uh, we will use a hash function H prime, and then H of X will be equal to H prime on X, XOR a, a random R. So again, R is part of the hash key and is sampled randomly. So what we require uh, from H prime in order for it to be uh, correlation interactable? So we require that for every function in the class F there exists a fake hash key which is indistinguishable from a real hash key. Further, we require that the correlation function H prime of X under the fake hash key XOR F of X. So I'm calling this the correlation function because it represents the correlation of H prime under the fake hash key and F. We require that this uh, correlation function has exponentially sparse image. And uh, in such a case, we say that H prime with a fake hash key and F have a sparse correlation. So assuming we have a sparse correlation between the fake hash function and F, then we can say that uh, with the overwhelming probability, uh, we have that a random R is not in the image of this correlation function, and, uh, uh, and therefore, uh, with a negligible probability, there exists a correlation between H and F, and therefore, H is some statistical correlation interactable. Good. Now that we have reduced our goal uh, to constructing sparse correlations, I'm going to show you real quick how to do that uh, using trapdoor hash. Um, so like I already said, uh, trapdoor hash uh, allows us to construct a homomorphic encryption scheme with very strong structural properties. So in general, in a homomorphic encryption scheme, uh, we can take an input x, and uh, given an encryption of a function f, we can homomorphically evaluate and obtain a ciphertext encrypting f of x. In a homomorphic encryption scheme, uh, which we construct from trapdoor hash, the post-evaluation ciphertext can be divided into two parts. One part we call the rate one ciphertext, and I'm going to refer to it as the encryption of f of x, and another part is a small hash, h of x. And uh, the decryption in trapdoor hash uh, goes as follows. So the first stage takes the hash of x, h of x, and produces a long vector e. And then one can recover f of x simply by XORing e and the encryption of f of x. So the second stage of the decryption is public. So how can we use such an encryption scheme in order to get sparse correlation? So I'm going to define the fake hash key for every function f to be the encryption of f. And then given an input x, we will compute h prime of x uh, simply as the ciphertext or the rate one ciphertext uh, of f of x. Okay, so see, we, so the uh, function h prime is simply homomorphic evaluation. So what about the correlation function now? So notice that the, correct, the correctness of decryption of trapdoor hash, the, um, the correlation function is simply this vector e, which is computed only given a small h of x. And if uh, h of x is uh, sufficiently small, then we can say that e is sampled from an, an exponentially sparse image, and therefore the correlation between h prime and, and f is uh, sparse. Uh, so I didn't say uh, what the, ha the real hash key uh, uh, is and why is it indistinguishable from the fake hash key. But notice that the fake hash keys are simply the encryption uh, of the functions they correspond to. So the real hash key can be an encryption of any arbitrary fixed function, and we can claim indistinguishability based on the security of the encryption scheme. So good. So from the work of Dotling et al., we know that we can uh, get such well-structured homomorphism for constant degree functions from many standard assumptions, including uh, DDH, for instance. And uh, like I showed you, this gives us correlation interactability for all constant degree functions, but unfortunately, this is insufficient for NISX. So now we ask whether we can get something stronger out of our idea of sparse correlations. And remember that we claimed that a random R is with overwhelming probability not in the image of a sparse correlation. 
But we also observe that the overwhelming probability R is actually far away from uh, this image. And almost immediately leads us to uh, defining a stronger notion of correlation interactability, which we call CIAPX, or correlation interactability for approximable relations. So we say that the hash function H is correlation interactability, is correlation interactable for relations approximable by F. If it's hard for an adversary not only to find a correlation, but rather to find an x such that h of x and f of x are close in Hamming distance. And we can similarly extend the CI notion to uh, a CI for a class of functions. Good. So now we know that we can get a CI for approximable constant degree relations based on trapdoor hash uh, from DDH, QR, LWE, or uh, VCR. And um, I'm not going uh, to go through the details of this transformation, but uh, you will have to believe me that using such uh, notion of CI, we can get relation interactability for all functions that we can approximate using constant degree. And let's be a bit more formal. I just want to tell you uh, what notion of uh, approximability we're uh, considering. So we say that a function f is probabilistically computable by a constant degree polynomial if there exists a distribution over such polynomials, such that for every input x, the probability that uh, f of x and p of x are far from each other in Hamming distance is negligible. Okay, where p here is this polynomial sampled according to the uh, distribution uh, which probabilistically computes f. Good. Um, so uh, now all is left to show you is how under LPN we have a sigma protocol for an NP-complete language uh, such that the batch challenge function has a pro uh, can be probabilistically computed using constant degree polynomials. Uh, and to do that, I'm going to first recall period work, uh, where all they had to do is show there exists a sigma protocol with an efficiently computable batch challenge. So uh, they start with uh, the classic sigma protocol for Hamiltonicity, which in particular uses some commitment scheme. And they use the observation that if this uh, commitment scheme is efficiently extractable, meaning that we can uh, extract the values underlying some commitment, uh, only by seeing the commitment and possibly using some trapdoor, then the batch challenge function uh, is efficiently computable. And more specifically, the batch challenge uh, function uh, given A, it simply consists of first extracting uh, the values underlying the commitment uh, A, and then applying some polynomial time computation, which we denote here by V. So clearly, if both V and uh, the extraction algorithm are efficiently computable, then so is the batch challenge function F. So um, for us, we need something stronger. We need to, to uh, show that the sigma protocol has a batch challenge, which is probabilistic constant degree. So we make the following observations. First, we uh, observe that there exists an LB LPN based commitment scheme uh, where the extraction uh, algorithm uh, can be uh, probabilistically computable by a linear function, uh, which are a constant, which are special uh, case of constant degree functions, of course. Um, but the problem is that uh, this polynomial time uh, verification uh, is of high degree, okay? At least in the protocol parameterlicity, and it's not clear how we can uh, probabilistically compute it using uh, constant degree polynomials. Um, but then we remember that using the Cochlevin transform, we can uh, transform any polynomial time verification to a 3CNF formula. Uh, and this is because here 3CNF satisfiability is complete for uh, such poly time verification. Um, and why is this useful? This is useful because 3 CNF formulas actually have uh, uh, probabilistic representations as uh, constant degree uh, polynomials. So um, again, using a Cochlevin, we can uh, adjust a bit the uh, Hamiltonicity protocol into a protocol where the batch challenge function consists of uh, first extracting the uh, values underlying the commitment A and then applying some 3 CNF formula rather than an arbitrary polynomial time computation. And now since we know how to probabilistically compute both the formula and the extraction using constant degree functions, we can uh, probabilistically compute the batch challenge function using constant uh, degree, and this completes our result. So let's conclude. Uh, so we show a new notion of uh, CI for approximate relations, uh, and we show that we can get NISX from standard assumptions uh, through uh, this new notion. Uh, in particular, we get the first NISX under DDH and LPN. And now there are many natural questions we can ask. First of all, whether we can uh, use uh, this new notion to get uh, applications, uh, maybe in ZAPs or in uh, complexity uh, hardness results. Um, we can also ask questions related to the applications itself. So um, it will be interesting to see whether we can minimize the set of standard assumptions. Uh, so maybe we can get NISX only from DDH or, or only from LPN. 
uh, it will be interesting to see whether we can extend our result uh, to get statistical zero knowledge or statistical soundness, soundness which we uh, uh, don't get either, uh, um, as opposed to uh, period work. Um, that's it. Uh, thanks for listening.